Hello everyone, welcome back to MixBuds TV Mixing and Mastering Tutorials on YouTube. I got several questions and requests on how would you go if you wanted to emulate a full analog signal flow inside your DAW with plugins. So what would you do if you wanted to mimic exactly as close as possible what happens in a full analog studio from the recording to the mixing to the final product. So I decided to make this video for you guys to show you how you would go about it. Let's take a look at two scenarios. The first one is you record all your tracks to tape, then you run them through your analog console and then you print the mix down to tape. Or you can skip the first stage, so the tracking to tape, if either you don't have enough uh, CPU power or you're just not interested in that and you just want to emulate what would be the analog console mixing and the final print of the mix to tape. Let's take a look at the first option. I have here a recording and mixing template project on Pro Tools. I have my drum trucks, which are these green and two blue ones. Then the two red ones are bass, guitars, and lead vocals, loop, synth, and key, four tracks of background vocals, and the light blue ones are all my effects. Black ones are my stem, out. And then we have a master bus and a mix print track, okay? Pretty simple, pretty standard. So if you wanted to mimic the recording of the audio material to tape, the first plugin in the slot should be a tape emulation. Now, this passage here, you could do it in two ways. You can either open an instance of tape emulation in the first slot, or you could select all the audio that you have in the project and use an audio suite plugin and basically batch process all the files like they would have been tracked to tape. For this example, let's do it with the insert. So the first move would be to open the tape emulation as a first slot on every track. But pay attention, since they you try to emulate what would happen in reality, the first process, the first tape emulation, shouldn't be opened on aux buses, but only on audio tracks, on actual audio tracks. So you don't open it on, for example, I have kick and snare sum, which are two aux buses, you don't open it on effects, for example. And you don't open it on your uh, out buses, on your groups, just the audio tracks. In my case, let's start with the drum. Oh, and of course, you can use any plugin. There are so many tape emulation plugins and so many console emulation plugins. Just use whatever you like, whatever you have, whatever you're used to. In my case, I will start with a free plugin by Bootsy that is called Ferric. And I'm opening it on every track as a first slot. As you can see, it opens up with my uh, start preset, which is just a little bit of saturation. So just to mimic the first tape uh, passage. And as you can see, it opened only on mono tracks, so you have to go and open it on stereo tracks too. So this would be drum, then we select all the bass, guitars, and vocals, and open it on those two. And these are all mono, so we don't have to open a stereo instance. Then we have loop and synth and key. Now, either this one's come from a VST or an actual hardware, I would go and open one in here as well. Because either way you want to print the actual audio even if they come from a VST, so you would track it to tape. Then background vocals, and we open an instance here as well. And as we said, we don't open it on effects and we don't open it on our groups out, drum, bass, guitars, uh, music lead, etc. Then the next thing is from tape, you will run your audio 
into your console. And here, again, you can use anything. Uh, Slate VCC is great. Uh, SSL uh, by Waves is great. There's um, Satson console that is great. There are so many. The console channel, you open it on every track, okay? Even, even the buses and the um, effects. And we go ahead and open it. And as you can see, these are on all my tracks now. And uh, in this case, using the Waves SSL, I have pretty much the channel strip with the coloration of the actual uh, desk channel, okay? But if you use VCC or Satson console or Waves um, NSL, for example, which doesn't have the compression and the EQ, what would you do is you would open the console channel for the saturation and the color. And then after it, you open a channel strip, like a regular channel strip, for example, the Avid. So you have the color from the desk channel, and then you have the processing of the analog channel strip, which is EQ and compression, okay? But in this case, we are using the Waves SSL, so we don't need that. Now, at this point, you would add any additional processing that you need to mix your project. Effects, delays, reverb, EQ, compressors, anything. And the last passage would be to print your two tracks to tape again. So what you need to do is to add a master tape plugin on your master bus before printing the final mix. In this case, let's open one of my favorite, which is the real bus from Tone Booster, but it could be anything else, okay? It could be, for example, uh, Steven Slate has the VTM, which is great. It would be the Waves J37 or the Kramer tape, anything. And this would be pretty much it. So the first processing would be tape on your audio tracks, then the console channel emulation on every track, and then the master tape on your two bus. But I would like to take this a step further and do some processing on what are my uh, group outs. In this case, I have drum, bass, guitars, music, lead vocals, background vocals, effects, and two parallel compression channels. So think about this as a sort of what Michael Brower uses, the multibus technique. So it could be, for example, a combination of compression and EQ, different from each channel or the same, or it could be one of the dedicated bus plugins that are available. And again, Slate VCC has a bus plugin. I'm pretty sure Satson Console has a bus plugin too, and also Waves with the NLS. So if you have one of those plugins, you just go ahead and open it on your buses. And also, you would probably want to open one on your master fader and drive it as hard as you want. The other option that it could be either instead of the bus plugin on your groups or just added, it would be to go with a compressor and an EQ for each group. So for example, I don't know, just to show you something, an API compressor for the drum and let's say a Poltec EQ so this would be my drum bus. And let's say, for example, on bass, I want the 1176. And maybe, I don't know, uh, whatever EQ, an SSL EQ, for example. That could be one. On guitars, I would probably go with the Kramer HLS EQ. Let's put it down there. And definitely with the API again as a compressor. Okay, for the music, maybe you want something sweet, like the Puke Child, okay? And maybe a Tone Look CQ, so a broad stroke EQ like this. For the lead vocals, let's say 1176, as a compressor, maybe a blue one, and a mag EQ. 
and so on and so forth. The combination here were just an example, so you can use whatever you want. And in the end, like I said, on the master fader, you just open whatever master tape plugin that you like and print your mix back to tape. It could be uh, the, the real bus, or it could be the J37 or the um, Waves Kramer master tape, okay, anything. So let's recap really fast. The first processing to mimic a full analog signal path in your DAW, it would be like this. First tape emulation on every audio track and only audio tracks, no auxes, no effects, okay? Then a channel strip console emulation, either a full channel strip like this, or as we said, like uh, an SL channel or a Slate VVC or Setson that don't have uh, EQ and compression, but then you can add whatever channel strip you like to that to uh, use the processing. And then you would open either the boss plugins on your groups and or a combination of EQ and compression. And then same thing goes for your master fader with the addiction of the master tape at the end. Okay? And this is pretty much a good way to mimic what would be a full analog recording and mixing in your DAW. Uh, like I said before, the first process, the first tape emulation, if you want, if you feel confident, you can batch process the actual audio files and save one slot and save CPU power. If you do that, I advise to back up uh, a clean version of your session just in case you need to go back to that. In that case, the first process would be the channel console emulation and then the rest would be the same. I know this was a simple video and probably many of you already knew how to do this, but for those who didn't, I hope this video was somehow informative. One last piece of advice is, as you know, my uh, light motive when mixing is don't do anything by default. So <laughs> don't do this by default either. Okay, try it. If you like it, if it sounds better, use it. Otherwise, just don't go with it because uh, you, you think you're supposed to emulate uh, an analog console. Okay just an advice okay so this is it for today i hope you liked the video if you did please don't forget to click the like button subscribe to the channel and see you next time